you, Mr. Yadav. Uh, very important information. I think uh, this leads us to believe that uh, not all fast food can be dangerous uh, for eating. In fact, uh, I would uh, now go over to Mr. Viprabhut Chatterjee. Uh, Mr. Chatterjee, the uh, WHO has called for elimination of industrially produced fast food from uh, the global food supply by 2023, and uh, India, in fact, has agreed to do so by 2022. Uh, do you feel that oil and vanaspati industries uh, can meet these targets, uh, specifically with uh, Adani Industries having three brands of vanaspati, still known brands of vanaspati? Do you think it is possible for uh, the industries to meet uh, WHO or FSSAI standards or transfers? Yes, actually, the uh, solid fats or the which the hydrogenation has been carried out so far. Uh, are basically uh, of two applications. One is the culinary that is cooking application. The other part is for bakery and confectionery application. And as uh, uh, chef spoke before me very correctly, that uh, for cooking purposes... Uh, Can we have a little loud voice please, Mr. Chatterjee? <laughs> Hello, am I audible? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, actually for cooking purposes, the shortenings or the volatility can be very easily uh, translated acid free. The real challenge comes when you need a certain uh, solid fat index, solid fat profile, melting and solidification profile, which is required in case of specific applications like bakery and confectionery. Now, uh, uh, as a part of the global Wilmar group, we are uh, major suppliers of uh, the specialty fats to uh, all, all the multiple, uh, multinational big wigs like uh, Mondelez, Nestle, Rich Gravis, and all. In fact, they 2022. They mandated us to complete it by 2020, that is this year. And in the meanwhile, our company globally adopted the slogan of uh, for a healthy growing nation. In India, it is healthy growing India. So therefore, all our products, we have already tested against this parameter, against this paradigm. And I'm happy to announce that actually by the year 2019, uh, we have converted all our solid fats into trans-free. Uh, as as is, was required by most of our uh, multinational customers, and also as uh, targeted by FSSAI. So, uh, and since we have been able to do it for even the complicated uh, confectionery fats and uh, bakery fats, even for customers like Cadbury and Nestle, I'm quite sure that it is a very doable thing. And uh, like we have done, I think the entire food industry can now change over to trans-free products very easily. Thank you, Mr. Jatchi. I think uh, that is a uh, wholesome news. Vanaspati uh, 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 industry saying that it's possible, doable, and achievable. Uh, that's a great news. In fact, I move over to Dr. Jagbeet. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, trans fatty acids over the decades, uh, as somebody else also mentioned, in fact, unknowingly has seeped into the household uh, kitchens, especially in rural and uh, semi-rural areas, in fact. Uh, so the consumption trends are quite regular uh, there, in fact, uh, even though the urbanization has uh, uh, given a little message to the consumers about uh, uh, the health harms of uh, vanaspati and trans fats. So what are, what are the possible health harms and uh, remedies of uh, regular con consumption uh, from a sp health specialist, uh, from a nutritionist? Okay, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Arshim. I think I'm so heartened to hear, uh, you know, the uh, person from uh, Domino's sharing that, you know, they are working on reducing the fat content and they're looking at reducing the trans fat content of uh, cheese in the pizza and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chatterjee from uh, Adani, sharing that all the trans uh, all the saturated fat is now trans fat free i think these are very very uh, encouraging statements which as a nutritionist gives me a lot of confidence uh, i think uh, see the the uh, the point which we need to address is 
Uh, in fact, uh, in the first half, I had a very interesting uh, panel discussion uh, wherein uh, we were actually talking that, uh, you know, uh, how is it that we can provide solutions uh, to people at large? So uh, all of us were in agreement that, you know, whatever messages we want to give to people at large should be very simple. And uh, should be, uh, you know, uh, ingredient based. So, as a nutritionist, uh, what I would like to, uh, you know, communicate, and I would like to uh, give this kind of a message to uh, people at large is uh, that, uh, you know, to apply uh, these principles wherein you can uh, do away with the culprit of. Uh, whether it is a trans fat, and to my mind, along with the trans fat, it is also the saturated fat. So let's not forget, even if we make India trans fat free, we still have to tell people that the total amount of saturated fat in your diet also has to come down. So I think uh, if globally we say 10% of the total calories to come from saturated fat, I think I would uh, go one step forward and it has been documented in, in Indian uh, publications also that we should look at a level of less than 7% because there is a direct correlation uh, between high sat fat intake uh, with high LDL uh, which is a bad cholesterol, low HDL which is a good cholesterol and going forward today we are seeing a lot of fat getting deposited in the liver. You know, whether it is the high uh, refined carbohydrate intake or whether it is the high amount of saturated fat intake. And, of course, if we can do away with trans fat, that's one uh, big thing which we achieve. But still, you know, we have to get these things down because the moment this fat is accumulating in our viscera, in our uh, uh, livers, it is leading to the risk of cancers. So... Uh, so I think uh, 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 if we want people to, uh, you know, adopt healthy options, uh, two, three messages which I want to give. Uh, one is as because it's a forum where, you know, we have regulators, we have people from industry, uh, uh, you know, we have to provide people with uh, healthy and, uh, uh, you know, judicious options. That is one. And also, uh, give those strong messages that how have we made these options healthy, that is one. Secondly, as uh, Dr. Halde said that, you know, a lot of our sector is unorganized and we are still dependent on a lot of street foods and a lot of foods which is not, uh, you know, really in the purview of the regulation. But still there is openness of to, you know, sensitize them and make those modifications so that the whatever is being served in that framework becomes more healthier. And uh, I uh, I was uh, I'm so heartened that I'm sharing the forum with the uh, Chef Manjeet Gill. And uh, uh, you know uh, today I strongly feel that uh, eating out is a norm in India, and people are dependent on food from outside. It's high time that the nutritionists and chefs come together. And uh, I, I am, I really, it's a wish list for me and it's a dream for me that, you know, if in India we can have uh, restaurants or range of restaurants which can provide food which is nutritious, safe and healthy and tasty. So let me say that nutritious food uh, can also be tasty or is tasty. And it's only the nutritionists and chef coming together, we can provide these kind of solutions. And not only that, I think these solutions should be uh, offered to the entire range of people. Because today, if I'm talking of diabetes or if I'm talking of heart disease, it is not only the problem of the upper socioeconomic strata. It is the problem of the lower socioeconomic strata as well. And, uh, you know, if we can... Uh, uh, innovate and come out with these kind of uh, solutions which are addressing the need for the entire uh, spectrum of socioeconomic strata and the age groups. I think that is where, uh, as a nutritionist, I would like to contribute and uh, see that we are, uh, you know, working towards that mandate of Eat Right India. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madan. I think it's a very important uh, 
<clears throat> that uh, combination of where uh, people come together, pool in their resources, and uh, come to some conclusive uh, evidences of delivering to the masses uh, the right kind of food. I think it's a very well valid point made. In fact, coming back to Dr. Prabhu's, in fact, uh, uh, Dr. Prabhu's, uh, uh, Dr. Madan just mentioned about uh, yeah, the elimination of trans fat in itself will uh, achieve partial goals, in fact, and saturated fats in different forms uh, have uh, <clears throat> their own uh, perils. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the approach of uh, your company in terms of uh, building up that particular consumer uh, confidence on uh, products of uh, many variety of products of Sokola and Parachute, so which are uh, being uh, made differently, which are uh, now probably uh, adhering to the pledge norms uh, and the consumer health comes foremost when you go in for uh, uh, product diversification. So what is it that you would like to convey to this particular uh, uh, group, in fact, in terms of your company's approach to uh, <clears throat> elimination of trans fats and reducing of saturated fats? Dr. Prabhu. Thank you, Asimji. I will answer this question in the two phases. First is the company perspective and also I represent the board for the Solvent Extraction Association which we are partnering with FSSAI on overall entire uh, oil industry. So I will be, I will actually play a canvas for the bigger perspective. The number one for uh, fortunately or otherwise we are the edible oil company wherein the refined oil and also expelled oil. So the trans fat Actually, the percent is in our uh, product is negligible because there is no hydrogenation. As we know that trans fat means the position of the cis bond is at the opposite, so trans level. Otherwise, it is a cis. So, when you do the hydrogenation or partial hydrogenation, the trans get formed at the higher temperature and with the hydrogen gas. Now, as Chatterjee has said, most of the technological advancement has actually ensured that without compromising on the nutrition, we can produce the product with the desired output uh, with the lower trans fatty acids. And that is possible, sir. And that's why this number of 2%, the target, which is actually very difficult, but yes, the target which has been taken and accepted by the entire community, which is the companies. As far as our products are concerned, since the trans fat is not actually the concern for our product and we are the completely non hydrogenite product, so that question will not be applicable. But however, we are continuously in working on pursuit of health and to reduce the load of non communicable diseases, we keep working with the experts and Dr. Jagmeet is also one of the advisors and we keep doing our reformulation as per acceptability of the consumer. As far as the solvent extraction is concerned, uh, Asimji, what we have seen, most of the companies, those who are working and do not have a technological advancement, like their refineries are old, where the temperature controls are not good, or in case of Manaspati, they do not have a right technology, there in the solvent extraction, the technical our uh, actually committee use the extended ha helping hand and they work with the individual companies and their product meets the requirement. Here how the double pressure comes Asimji, it is not only from regulator. Regulator brings the regulation but the buyers, now most of the buyers which are Nestle or any other company, those who are buying their product, they put their internal limit which is a much stringent limit than the government limit. So it, be, it become a business uh, importance. Also, CMG, I congratulate the voice for making this issue so common. And now everybody is aware about this issue. And whoever is sends you the company requirement, they first put the limit of the trans fatty acid. You should give me below this 2%. I think the moment the consumer is asking, like what the uh, jubilant uh, group, uh, my friend was talking, if consumer is asking them to give me a pizza with the less of uh, particular thing, naturally their R&D department have to work. After this pandemic, I think health has become a more important and health has become a wealth. Earlier, Asimji, we used to ask when we talk to each other, might be what is your plan for going abroad or what you are doing, which property you purchase. But today we only ask one thing, how is your health? We do not ask any other 
question now so the health become a paramount important and thanks to the net pro fan the association of all the stakeholders this awareness is increasing and i think industry is also participating yes for the industry the watchdog and the other stakeholders actually social active uh, actually consumer active uh, agencies and particularly voice they keep guiding and also keeping the all the people on the same place so with this i hope i have answered this and again i will come back if you have any specific question thank you asim ji thank you prabodh ji in fact i i go back to the regulatory framework and uh, dr veena uh, if i may ask you in fact uh, uh, this question popped up many times through many speakers in fact uh, the unregulated sector or the msmes uh, uh, involved in the in fact uh, how does uh, fssi or the government or uh, ministry of health uh, propose to deal with the unregulated sector which contributes a substantial amount of uh, unhealthy food uh, to the consumers uh, and probably in the vanaspati market produces almost 40% of the vanaspati uh which is uh, trans uh, i mean uh, trans fat laden in fact and uh, beyond uh, is it beyond regulation or can we do something to actually have them in the control through uh, the regulatory framework uh, dr rubina yeah thank you uh, as uh, we know that in the market there are many
kindly unmute sorry hydrogen in fat according to me is never a favorite ingredient for anybody who knows cooking well it is used only because of cost nothing else not for the flavor not for the thing i am only saying in the baking yes little bit texture difference come with the hydrogen fat there is nothing else in india there is no food which require hydrogen in fat it needs ghee and oil the other all good oils which we have in the nation so it was never favorite neither of mine in itc we stopped long time back overnight that from tomorrow there is no hydrogen fat will be used in the hotels and few years back it was overnight that we will not use because it is not favorite and there is nothing in the kitchen misses is fat it is only a myth if somebody just give make the excuse that myth also is created to make the excuses it is only the cost there is nothing else but at the end in the year you find it doesn't make much effect on the cost also they have the if you use a ghee it doesn't make much effect on the cost because the use is reduces quite a lot the controls have to be made much better so we stopped it like that and it should be otherwise also i'm saying it should be stopped like that only and other all alternatives which like we name the ingredients or we can that have a napkin and this it is so simple it anything fried in hydrogen in fat it is high trans fats so why don't we remove this culprit permanently and definitely i'm saying there should be more round tables happen with the industry with the shares with the you know all people who are interlinked with this uh, topic we must have round tables we must have interactions like the manufacture of the oil and the fat they are saying they are doing this they are doing i don't know i'm sorry what should not take it away i don't know how much true they are talking about now customer is saying that i want less trans fat how customer is getting the confidence that it takes less trans fat how much transparent it is how much truth is in that how much less high scientific jargon words which i can't even pronounce will understand that is written on that also ultimately the common person must get the right what the common person should get and it should by and the language should be such that we need you need not to be academic to understand that you should have little confidence and a little intelligence to understand that unless that doesn't happen this problem will never go away even i think after uh, stopping by the who or the un in 2022 still something will keep happening and the good people who are on the street food the right people i'm telling you today also they use the ghee but they know how much to use where to use how to keep the food better and the tasty and even i can tell you that also i can prove as the demonstrations that if you use hydrogen in fat you have to because all the refined oils it spoils the taste of the food and then to correct that taste you unnecessarily add too many ingredients in it but if you do with the free from trans fats in a ghee or a single oil not the refined whether it's a ground or a sesame or coconut they have their own flavor they have their own taste you need not to correct their taste so use less ingredients you make food more tasty so we we must understand there should be more round table i mean every week every 10 days there should be more conferences of this people who are involved in this must find the solution and solution is not very technical or complicated solution it does shift to your traditional oils and fats that's it don't really any research on this otherwise we will come with the new oils that you research now after 70 year again we will be sitting and talking